they didn't like. Uh, so how do you think it might be easier to see the screen? Maybe, if the front lights are off. That works, yeah. All right, you can go. Hi, everyone. My name is Sandia, and this summer I've been working on background data and nuclear interactions at uh, the CMS experiment at the LHC at CERN. And so, for those of you who don't know, the CMS experiment is basically a nuclear interaction experiment that happens at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And it collects data from nuclear interactions um, from proton-proton beams. And this is um, a slightly unclear picture of what the CMS detector actually looks like. There's the tracker, um, the beam pipe, and the pixel shield, and then lots of other layers of equipment around it. And it basically is just collecting data from nuclear interactions. Now, the purpose of the research that I've been doing is basically to format the data that is coming in from the CMS experiment. So the data that it collects has inaccurately reconstructed interaction points, so it doesn't really make the correct pathways. And the use of the machinery as it heats and cools, it you know contracts and it expands. And so that causes shifts in the equipment and um, there is adjustment needed for optimal usage of the equipment. And so the research that I've been doing creates a fit function that would um, create best fit lines for the data that we collect at the CMS experiment. And so we get data from the LHC and from Monte Carlo plots. Monte Carlo is a data simulation system and they're stored, all this data is stored in trees. So the function that I've been working with throughout the summer creates best fit lines for this data. And the goal is to get as close to the actual data as possible. So to create a function that gets as close to the true data as possible so we can use that. And uh, the program that we use is called a Minuit program and it's used to adjust various parameters and values within a computer program. And so currently I'm working with just line functions that eventually I'm hoping to move on to polynomial fits. And so this is an example of what the data looks like with background, which is all of that blue stuff around that in the first picture. And this is all data from the beam pipe. And after the fit function is applied, the second photo is what it looks like without background. And it's obviously a lot clearer, it's a lot more usable, and it's essentially a lot closer to what we need. And the third uh, graph that we have, the plot, is a slice from an exponential background fit. And that's essentially like as close as it gets to the true data. And um, here's another example of what it looks like with the pixel shield. And again, the first one is uh, a photo with bad phi sectors. The second one is without the bad phi sectors. And the third one is a slice from another exponential background fit. Okay. So I had a lot of issues doing this research. And most of it was technology centered, like Jim said at the beginning. And so I had a lot of, there are three programs that I kind of had to use with this, and that was Ubuntu mainly, and uh, Root, which is a data analysis framework that CERN uses for all of their data. And so Root is not really compatible with Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is a Linux distributor, and to run Root, you basically need a Linux OS, but I had Windows 10, which is not Linux, and it doesn't really work on that very well. So I had to download Ubuntu and try to create like a portable memory stick sort of thing that would run Linux off of the USB drive. And that was very tedious and I still haven't really gotten it to work, but hopefully I'll get there eventually. And most of the issues I had were with, you know, older versions of various things not being compatible with other things. Like root wasn't compatible with the newest Ubuntu, but older Ubuntu versions weren't compatible with Windows 10, and I had lots of issues like with my hardware, not really wanting to boot from the USB drive itself, and my computer not knowing how to do that, and I wasn't sure how to get my computer to do that. 
so I had a lot of issues there, but I'm hoping to overcome those eventually and begin my future work, which I'm one of the people that's continuing research after today and after the end of this week. So I'm hoping to actually get my computer working eventually and continue working with straight line fits and eventually start working on higher order functions like I started, like I was talking about the polynomial functions and essentially just fit more graphs and more functions with the beam pipe and the pixel shield. And I had a lot of help during this project and most of my help was from Eilish Gibson. She was really, really helpful to me. She taught me all of this stuff and helped me with my computer issues. Um, Professor Beringer, he's my um, mentor, research mentor, and Anna was a contact at CERN that I got linked with, uh, that Professor Beringer and Eilish linked me with, and she was the person who helped me get started on all this research and, you know, supplied the data for me to fiddle around with. So, are there any questions? Yes. Cindy, I missed something basic. So I didn't get what those what those what those pictures were the, the round pictures. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me go back to those. Right. So this is um, data that's collected from the beam pipe, right? So this particular set of pictures that I have. And so as I was talking about the data, all the data that's collected has background, and we basically don't want that background there. So the first one is what it looks like with background, all the blue stuff in the back, I mean in the background. And we try to apply fit functions to get rid of some of that background, you know, adjust figuring out where the machinery machinery needs to go after it's been used, because the measurements have to be really accurate. And so the second photo is what it looks like without the background. And it's a lot clearer and um, more usable. And Sorry. I think my question is more fundamental than that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't really mean by, by beam pipe data. Okay, so the nuclear interactions that CMS does occurs like within the various parts of the CMS detector. There's, I mean, there's the tracker and then there's the beam pipe and the pixel shield. They're all just like kind of layered around each other. It's like a tube and there's layers. And so this is data that's collected from the beam pipe. It's um, so the data is collected from the tracker system and the nuclear interaction tracks are propagated back to the nuclear interaction point. And so what the two maps on the left are, are of the place where the nuclear interaction happened. And we're using that to map where the beam pipe is. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so it's a head that hits on the Right, no, I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay. And the other thing is, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure Ubuntu works with 16.04 because I use it. Um, and are, are you trying to build the binary yourself, or did you just download the it's, binary? I'm not really sure exactly why it hasn't been working, okay. but it's... Um, it should you? Yeah, the, I well, it. I'm using... I've been having to use root 5 because I think that's what works best for what I'm doing, and root 5 doesn't work okay. with the new one because, I mean, difference. yeah. Okay. That stops at Ubuntu 14, and Ubuntu 14 doesn't work with Windows 10. So I can help with that. Okay. Anything else?